Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Carolyn RNY. If you're new here, welcome. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. And today we're talking about my dieting history. All right, today's video is going to be kind of a chatty video. I have a cup of tea here and I'm just gonna sit and chat with you guys about this topic that I've been thinking about for a couple weeks and I really just need to get it off my chest. So I'm hoping <laughs> that with my hair pinned back and some tea in my hands that I won't touch my face or play, mess with my hair too much because I felt like I did that a lot in my food intolerances video and it was kind of distracting for me when I was editing so I imagine it was probably a little distracting for you when you were watching. Anyway, let's go ahead and get into this video. It might be a long one so get some tea and let's have a little chat. So the farther out from surgery I get, the more I keep thinking about my past and how I handled trying to lose weight and dieting and exercising and all of these things that I tried so hard at and just kept failing and sort of wondering why it took weight loss surgery for me to finally start losing the weight. I'm still only six and a half months out so there's still a lot up in the air but it's been going really well so far. I was never a very slim or slender child. I was always the tallest in my class up until like fourth or fifth grade. And I had a little meat on my bones, you know, I was kind of chunky, but it really started to become very noticeable around third or fourth grade. Um, that was around the time that my parents separated. Uh, we were living in Connecticut at the time and I just was participating in behaviors that now looking back on were very eating disorder like and very concerning. I vividly remember, you know, coming home from school, my mom was a well, she started working at that point again. She was a stay-at-home mom before my parents separated, but um, now that she was sort of a single mom, she had to start working and support us again. So um, she would be working and we would get home from school and, uh, you know, we'd kind of have free access to the to the kitchen or she would be in the living room and I would sneak into the kitchen and like grab things from the fridge or from the pantries, run out of the kitchen run up into my room and hide the food and like make sure no one had heard me and then once I knew that the coast was clear I pulled the food out and I started eating. That behavior continued on for years and the secrecy of eating food in my room or behind closed doors or somewhere where people couldn't see me was probably one of my most destructive behaviors or eating patterns that I d just developed over the years. And I got better and better at hiding and sneaking food, but the weight really started to climb on and people noticed. I didn't really notice, to be honest. I mean, I feel like I was able to keep up with my friends. Granted, my friends were a lot smaller than I was, but it didn't really become apparent to me until my friends' moms started talking about it in front of me, which is really hard, <laughs> and sort of comparing me to their daughters, my friends. And that's a really hard thing to deal with. And it just goes to show how early on we start comparing ourselves and how other people start comparing us and how there are always people judging you even when you're a little innocent kid who knows nothing of what you're talking about really in a sort of real life consequential way. My parents divorce was final at the end of 2004. I was nine years old and my mom's mom, my grandmother who's Swedish, uh, they were who was in Sweden at the time um, got really really sick um, she had kidney cancer and in February of 2005 my mom flew over there to be with her and was there when she died my mom had no family in the States all of her family was in Sweden my mom is Swedish my dad is American my dad's from Virginia we were living in Connecticut at the time 
So my mom came back from, you know, the death of her mom and sat down with my dad, I guess. And my dad was going through a lot of issues on his own that I don't want to delve into. And he was making the decision to move back down to Virginia to be closer to his family and his support system. And my mom decided that because she really didn't have any sort of support system family-wise, and my grandfather was really sick, he had type 2 diabetes, both of his legs were already amputated, and he was in, I would say, a depression after my grandmother, his wife, died. And so my mom decided to move to Sweden, and she took me and my brother with her. And the custody deal between her and my dad was that for the school year we lived with my mom, and on summer breaks and Christmas holidays and, you know, stuff like that, we flew to Virginia to be with my dad and my paternal grandparents. This comes into importance a little later on, but I remember getting to Sweden and I already spoke a little Swedish. My mom has been speaking Swedish to me since I was a baby. I wasn't totally fluent yet, but we started an interna at an international school and I remember going into the nurse's office and getting, you know, a whole physical done just so that they had records at, at the school. And I remember getting on the scale and it was showing 75 kilos. And the nurse and my mom were really shocked because 75 kilos is a lot for a 10 year old. It's about, I think like 160, 175, 170. 6,570 pounds, which is a lot for a 10 year old. That's, you know, the size of, a, you know, it's the weight of a grown woman. That was a, the weight of my mom. And I just remember feeling really ashamed and really embarrassed. And now I had a number attached to my weight. Now I knew, you know, this wasn't normal. And I don't know if you've ever been to Europe, but everyone in Europe is a lot smaller, a lot slender, a lot more slim than people here in the United States. It's, I think it's just kind of the genetics and Swedish people are very much that way. Granted, I went to an international school, so there were people from all over the world, but a lot of people were Swedish as well. And I walked into that classroom and I was the biggest person there. And I just, it was really, really, really demoralizing. And I, those feelings of guilt and shame and embarrassment just festered. And I already had a lot of unresolved issues with my parents' divorce and everything surrounding that. And so, you know, in Sweden is really where my dieting story begins. My mom took me to a children's hospital uh, to a, a specialist and we got blood work done and we started seeing a nurse. Every month we'd go to the nurse and I'd weigh in and we'd talk about, you know, what I was eating and what I was doing and it wasn't a full-fledged diet at that point, I would say, but there was so much focus on my weight and so much focus on what I was doing and what I wasn't doing. And at 10 years old, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot of pressure. That's a lot of just feeling micromanaged and I hated it. I hated it. And so my outlet, my way to rebel, my way to feel like I had any sort of control over my life because I didn't feel like I had any control at that point. The only way I felt control was, was binging, was sneaking food, hiding it, and binging out on it when my mom wasn't uh, around, you know, she was in the other room, or she was at work, or, you know, whatever. I binged, and it started early. It started at 10 years old, uh, or probably, or you know, earlier when we were in Connecticut. And then, you know, we started school in April, late in the year, and school ended around June, and so for summer vacation, we flew to my dad's. My we, I mean, I'm talking about me and my brother. So we flew to my dad's and in Virginia, and you know, it was a good summer. We, uh, my dad started dating someone, my mom had started dating someone, Ugh. you know. Uh, the woman my dad started dating eventually became my stepmom. She's still my stepmom and she's wonderful. We did have kind of a rocky relationship in the beginning, but it's good now. But I gained like 20 pounds, 20, 30 pounds that summer and came back to Sweden closer to 100 kilos. 
I think I'd gotten to like 200 pounds going into my fifth grade year of school and my mom was very upset she was very upset that I had gone to the States and my dad hadn't, you know, been watching what I was eating or paying any sort of attention to what I was eating. And so, you know, we got back to Sweden and things had to change. You know, I was being monitored more of what I was eating. And I, listen, I don't want to make this out to seem that my mom is a bad person or that she was, you know, trying to make me lose weight. She has had weight issues of her own and sort of complexes of her own that you know made her very fearful of me being becoming over overweight overweight and obese and not being able to be a kid and those are valid reasons and she's my mom and she was scared and worried for me and all she's ever wanted to do was to help me and she's been my number one cheerleader my biggest supporter and i love her to death and yeah there are things that she you know probably shouldn't have done and if we could go back i think we both would make changes to how we handled things but that's in the past and it was done how it was done so and so we started going back to that same nurse, you know, once a month and checking in and weighing in and we were going to nutrition classes and, you know, my mom, we were very careful and monitoring what I was eating and what I wasn't eating and I was still sort of hiding food but not really. But then over Christmas I went to my dad's again and gained more weight and then I came back to Sweden and... I either lost a little weight or I stayed the same with, you know, the habits that my mom reintroduced again. And then, you know, so I maintained or stabilized. And then summer vacation rolled around and I went back to my dad's and I gained, you know, another 20 pounds over the summer. So now at this point, I'm like 12 or 13 and my mom and my dad, my dad's very concerned as well. Like, you know, it's not a free-for-all. It wasn't a free-for-all when I was at my dad's. You know, they were very concerned at one point. They, we had a babysitter uh, during the summertime or like a nanny or whatever. And I remember before my my dad and my stepmom left for work, they would lock the pantry so that I wouldn't get into the pantry. Uh, yeah, so, you know, a, a lot of things in my young life were centered around my weight. It felt like that was all people could talk about. That was all people focused on. And so that was all I focused on. And it felt like everything was out of my control and there was nothing I could do to control my own life apart from eat and so that's what I did and it made me feel better for a little while and then the swath of guilt and shame and embarrassment came and then I wanted to binge again so you know at 12 or 13 was when I started Weight Watchers for the first time. I was in Sweden and we had to get special permission from a doctor because I was under the age of 18. I was like 12 or 13 and I would go to the meetings and I would track my points and I get really emotional thinking about like being that young and already tracking food. Like it's so sad to me because that's not how anyone should live their life, let alone a child. But yeah, that's what I did and I lost a little weight and then, you know, I don't know, it ended. And then I've done like Weight Watchers like five or six times throughout, you know, my life. I think the last time I did it was, I think I was like 21, 22. That was the last time. I moved to live with my dad for a year for eighth grade and did Weight Watchers there. And then that ended because it was, I just, it, I hated it. I hated it. It was not working. I didn't want it to work. I wanted to keep eating. I wanted to keep doing, you know, whatever the heck I was doing because I hated everyone's focus on me and the only focus being my weight. And it felt very demeaning to have people only look at me or pay attention to me because of my weight and what I was eating and what I was not eating and exercising or not exercising. And it was taught or it was taught to me or impressed upon me a very, very young age that it matters what you look like. It matters, you know, your size matters. And that 
was ingrained for me for a long time and in the past two or three years I've only just begun to unravel that mindset and challenge it and and know that my worth and my everything is not hinged upon how much I weigh. I'm so much more than that and I'd be lying if I said I didn't have any anger or resentment towards my loved ones, you know, my parents and my grandparents for putting so much pressure and putting so much focus on my weight. I felt that a lot, especially in my early or my late teens, my early 20s, like I was angry. I was pissed off that so much of my young life had been spent zeroing in on this one thing. And if people had just left me alone, if people had just let me be a kid, if people had just let me... <sighs> I don't know I think if it hadn't been such a focus I don't think it ever would have gotten as bad as it did but I kept dieting and I kept binging and I kept restricting and um, I think in high school in ninth grade I did this soup diet that my mom had also done and it was through like a trainer at this it was through it was like a program through this gym and you would drink these soups, which were disgusting, like two meals a day, and then you'd have one meal for dinner, or like a real meal for dinner or whatever. And I, I, I think I was, at that point was like 115 kilos, and I think I lost like 15 kilos and I got down to 100 kilos. I don't know what that is in pounds. You can do the conversion yourself. And I felt great, and it was really great. People noticed at school and you know it's nice and then it just it wasn't a sustainable lifestyle you know not eating two meals a day and then eating like I, it was restricting it was not giving my body enough fuel and I binged and there were times where and I would go every week for a weigh-in and so I would sneak candy and food and stuff during times where I wasn't with my mom or like wasn't with friends and stuff and then when I knew I had to weigh in the day before and the day of I I wouldn't eat or I would just eat those soups and I wouldn't eat a proper meal so even at like 15 16 years old I was severely restricting myself and then severely binging and then I did the same thing when I did Weight Watchers for the last time, I did the same thing every diet. Um, I did paleo, I did Atkins, I did high carb or high, high fat, low carb. I've done everything you can think of. But the last time I did Weight Watchers, which is something I was thinking about the other day, was I would, the meetings would be on Wednesdays and you would weigh in on a Wednesday. So, you know, from Thursday, so from a Thursday to like a Sunday or Monday, I would binge and I would eat all the stuff I wanted and have a good old time. And then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I would restrict. And I'd maybe have one meal on Monday or Tuesday and then I wouldn't eat anything all day on, on Wednesday. Wouldn't eat a thing would just drink a little water, would just drink water and even that I was, you know, because the meeting was at night and weighing in at night and you're you're wearing full clothes, I was like terrified that if I drank even like a liter of water that it would show I gained a pound. So I wouldn't eat anything all day. And then I'd go weigh in and I'd lose, you know, two, three pounds. And then on my way home from that meeting, I would stop at two fast food restaurants and stop at Wendy's and McDonald's because that was all we had in my little small town on in Virginia. So I'd stop at Wendy's and I'd get like uh, a, one of their chicken sandwiches or like a Baconator or something. I think at that time they were doing their like Baconator fries. I think that was when it like first started and I got those and then I'd swing into McDonald's because it was like just a few things down and I'd get their fries and I'd get like I think my go-to was a quarter pounder or the chicken nuggets um sometimes if I was just going to McDonald's I would get two meals with large fries and a large soda and I'd take it all home and I'd go upstairs into my loft above my grandparents garage uh, so it was totally separated from where they were and I would eat all that food 
And looking back on that cycle and that mindset, like I don't, I am not in that frame of mind anymore. Like I don't, even when I know that I'm weighing in on like the first or the 16th of the month, cause I only weigh myself twice a month now, that thought of, well, I probably shouldn't eat today because I'm gonna weigh in tomorrow morning. I don't think like that anymore. I don't have thoughts like that. I eat food because I know that I need to eat or I'm going to want to binge. And because of my stomach and the way it is now, I physically can't do that. But it is wild thinking about that frame of mind that I was in and how sick I was. I was sick. I was in the midst of a very, very destructive eating disorder and binge eating was running rampant through my life. And I am so sad that for 15 years it was like that. And, you know, I, I wish I could have been one of those people who like figured out a way to, you know, eat food normally and like not diet. And, you know, I think of Stephanie Buttermore who did the all in thing for a year and how she like sort of restabilized her, her, extreme hunger or whatever, but I don't know. Some days I feel guilty that I had weight loss surgery and that I went that route. Like, did I try everything I could have tried? And the logical side of me, the rational side of my brain knows that weight loss surgery saved my life. You know, I got up to 400 pounds. There's no way I think that I would have been able to diet and exercise that off. Like, I, I didn't... I don't know and and it was a life-saving procedure for me and yes it changed my life permanently and the way I eat permanently but I don't think the way I did anymore I don't have those thoughts anymore of wanting to restrict or wanting to binge and that is that became so apparent to me when I was weighing in for my six month post-op and I had no thought that I should restrict the day before. Like that didn't come across my mind at all. And that to me is such a relief because I spent 15 years dreading weigh-ins and dreading stepping on the scale and feeling like everything I put in my mouth was going to make me gain five pounds. And that's not true. And if I, I feel like if when I was eight or nine years old, if the idea of intuitive eating or the idea of, you know, you don't have to eat everything in sight, but you don't, like, you don't have to say no to everything. Like, my parents would, they wouldn't keep peanut butter in the house. They wouldn't let me have any sort of sweets. They wouldn't let me have anything, like, it was all protein and vegetables and that's a miserable life I'm sorry like I you know I I don't know I I think if if a more balanced approach had had come around early early on then I probably wouldn't have needed to have had bariatric surgery but that didn't happen and I'm very grateful that I had surgery I think it was the right choice for me it's not the right choice for everyone but my eating history, my dieting history was so destructive and the fact that I don't ever have those thoughts anymore is the greatest freedom I've ever had in my entire life. I've never ever experienced this kind of freedom from food before and it is fucking magical, okay? <laughs> I apologize for swearing but it, it just it is and if you ever felt like you had that same kind of behavior that i did seek help definitely seek out a professional someone who isn't going to put you on a diet or anything like that or make you exercise like that was another thing like when i worked out when i was in high school it was to punish myself it was <clears throat> to punish myself for binging the night before and that was the only thing i did like I would kill myself in the gym. Like I would go on the elliptical for an hour and drip and sweat and it still wasn't good enough. And I still had to keep punishing myself 
for binging and I don't do that anymore. I don't work out to punish myself. I don't work out to, to you know, burn off the meal I had the night before. Like I work out or move my body because it feels good and because I can do it. There was a period of time at my heaviest where I couldn't freaking move. I think I've talked about that before, but you know, I went on a three and a half mile walk this morning because I could, because it felt good, because being outside in the fall weather where it's sort of, you know, this crispness in the air, like it was amazing. And I, <laughs> I wanted to walk and it wasn't for any sort of punishment or anything like that. And that is, that's huge. Like I know that there are women and men out there who are still punishing themselves and trying to use working out and exercising as a punishment, as a way to to hurt themselves and make up for bad behavior that they did the day before. Like that's insane to me. And I feel like we're now in a space in like the diet culture and stuff like that where people are calling out that behavior and it's not a good behavior to have. It's it's not something we should be celebrating and it's not something we should be actively working towards. We need to have a balanced, healthy approach to working out. It shouldn't be used to punish you. Food shouldn't be used to punish you and you shouldn't, you know, restrict yourself. and just if we just had a more balanced approach and if we weren't so hard on ourselves if we didn't focus so much on food like it would make our lives so much better i think okay i think i've rambled on long enough my tea is almost cold i think i was all over the place on this video but i hope i gave you some insight of my dieting history and my past and how starkly different it is from how I live my life now. And if you are still in that dieting mentality, listen to me. You are not defined by the food that you eat. You're not defined by your pant size or your shirt size or the number on the scale. You are incredible the way you are. If you want to lose weight, that's okay. And try to approach it in a slow, healthy way where you're not punishing yourself because you don't deserve to be punished, okay? Have a wonderful, wonderful day and I will see you guys in the next video.